All right, I'm going to be doing some quick analysis of four games I'm playing against Arrow Dawes today, going over my misplays as well as um, the lines I decided to play. He was playing a different deck today, Marchesa, and we're just going to go through these games real quick. Um, I get to play first. Game one, I don't think I misplay too much. This hand is perfectly keepable here, right? We've got two lands as well as a probe, a chalice. We're only one man away from Factor Fiction, Vandal Blast for any soul rings. We get to take a look at his hand, and we have a bounce spell. So not a bad hand at all. Nothing super broken, but not horrible. Volcanic off the top turns our Factor Fiction online, which is what we have in our hand. Not too bad. We're going to go ahead and just pay for this Kataxan Probe, save a little life, possibly add Nauseam Line, take a look at his hand. We see that he has his own Vandal Blast as well as a Soul Ring and a Two Rock. So his hand is looking pretty scary as well as a card advantage from Dark Confident. No counter spell. I'm not really worried about this red spell here. Only two lands, but a very decent hand. We hit our own Soul Ring, making us a very much mirror match type game with Soul Ring into Two Rock, which is going to get Vandal Blasted with card advantage behind, pretty much. And double lands for both of us. So at this point, we're on pretty even footing, um, except I have the first turn advantage. He's going to go ahead and open his Soul Ring and play his Two Rock. So we're going to, of course, play our own Two Rock, Vandal Blast his Soul Ring, and prep to get our Soul Ring Vandal Blast, which is okay because our Factor Fiction will be online. So on his turn, we expect, what, Dark Confident and Vandal Blast, which is exactly what he goes ahead and does here. Um, if you notice, I think this is a different land, so he has hit his third land just like we have. Um, we hit a fourth land here. We're going to go straight into Factor Fiction to avoid counter magic. There goes Factor Fiction. I see this pile, and at this point I'm going, whatever pile Demonic Tutor's in, I'm taking. So he goes ahead and puts Demonic Tutor receiving song, so we're going to go ahead and take that pile. He, however... In a true mirror match, plays his own Demonic Tutor. Now, I don't know that this goes and gets his next card, but if it, even if it did, that's a decent play. He goes ahead and he goes and gets Thoughtseize, and he's going to go ahead and strip my Demonic Tutor. Pretty even game so far. Dark Confident swings in, starting to get that card advantage online early in the game, just where you want to see him. Um, I've got nothing here, but this is where the advantage of playing Jaleva kicks in. Um, yes, I could bounce something with Rift, but it's not that strong, so we're going to go ahead and play Jaleva here. Gross. She gets two wheels underneath. Cabal Ritual is fairly dead unless we have Ad Nauseam in our hand. And if you can see, my yard is ready to play a full Ad Nauseam off this Jaleva activation, but we do not have it. Reanimate can be okay, but nothing really juicy here to grab with that either. But we've got a Time Twister and a Windfall, the Time Twister being the stronger of the two because our hands have been grinded down. So that Time Twister hit makes her incredibly deadly. He draws his card here. As you can see, we get to see his cards. Not a counterspell, not too worried about it. He's going to go ahead and copy his own copy of Jaleva here, and he whiffs much harder than we did. Um, he does take my Force, which I kind of forget about later in the game, his own Mana Leak, and my Thoughtseize. The Thoughtseize being the one scary card that he gets. But we draw Notion Thief off the top, which gives us Notion Wheel combo for free off Jaleva, and he is pretty much boned with no blue open, even if he did it a counter. Um, this game is all but in the bag. And I hit tutor, 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 mana, mana. Yeah, he's just done. And he has no hands. So at this point, we're going through the motions. We're going to go ahead and gild the lotus and set up an easy kill for next turn. Um, we go ahead and grab high tide because our force will have gone. Otherwise, we could force a will as thoughts as we see underneath his general and just set up an easy kill with our Yogmoss will and grabbing high tide with the other because we have frantic search to grab one of our top deck tutors and a natural draw to hit the other. Gamble, we don't want to waste right. We don't want to use right here because it's fairly dead and we don't want to take any risks at this point. So he's going to go ahead and. Thought sees us. If you look, he draws a Bloodstained Mire with his Dark Confidence, so the card is still unknown. He goes ahead and swings, gets his dethrone triggers. Hip hip hooray. He thought sees at the high side high tide, because that is in fact the best card to take here. Um, if he takes one tutor, I get high tide into frantic search for Yogmas Will, and the game is in fact over. So he's gonna chance that I have to take a little longer to get that. But with double tutor, we're gonna make that mana right back up by putting a dark ritual on top. Since we get a double cast it off of our Yog Must Will and make turn that one island into an extra two black here, and then an extra two more black when we cast our Yog Must Will as well as additional storm. So it didn't really matter. He didn't hit what he needed, and this game is pretty much wrapped up fairly quickly. So that is game one. Um, he concedes, I think, at Mines' Desire phase or something of that nature. 
Yes. Now we have Reman plus Mind's Desire. Way too much mana. We factor fiction for value because we have extra mana. And we hit a shit ton of mana. We've still got a Vamp Tutor over here. Draw spells over here. The game is more than in the bag. We go ahead and even bounce our Mind's Desire. Um, he has 27 life. Tendrils is actually just lethal at this point. So he goes ahead and packs it in. Game two. Game two, he gets to play first because we played first game one, and well, ma basically because we won. Um, fetch land, steam vents, impulse, past and flames, remand, future sight. Not a bad hand at all. Uh, brainstorm plus impulse both lets us dig for more mana sources. We've got something to be a little defensive here with remand. We've got a good end game card of future sight. The most dead card in our hand here is past and flames, and one dead card is no problem. We're going to have two dual lands here. We're going to have all our colors fixed with double islands, so we're quite happy with this hand. He opens Soul Ring. Yet again, very strong. We get to see our own little Mana Vault here, and we're going to raise him the Mana Vault, even though we don't have anything to feed it into quite yet, needing Triple Blue for Future Sight. Um, it's not a bad play here. And if he has something like a Vandal Blast, we'd go ahead and let him waste it on this here because we don't even really have a follow-up play. Um, the reason we leave the Steam Vents is we're going to be able to use that blue from Brainstorm off this first land and get a full craft. He goes ahead and plays Zaudan the One-Eyed. So, Zaudan the One-Eyed, not a bad card here. And we draw our Notion Thief. At this point, we're still on the same plan here. Pass. Remand anything that's absolutely backbreaking, And uh, Brainstorm else. And then Crack Fetch Land. So he goes ahead and swings, get the aggro going. I'm not too worried about it at this point. And he has no real follow-up, so we're going to go ahead and go to our Brainstorm plan here. He's going to Chaos Warp, so we're going to float mana just in case we hit Factor Fiction. We don't. We hit two lands and a Chain of Vapor here. Um, this is the first mistake I make. Yeah, one second. Uh, in, in that I should uh, be probably Chain of Vaporing the Zao Dun instead of the Soul Ring for Tempo. Or even keeping that Notion Thief because both Notion Thief and Future Sire are decent. I don't know what cards I'm going to draw. I decide to put the uh, Pass and Flames down as a kind of a no-brainer. And then I also decide to put down the Notion Thief. I'm going to go ahead and Tempo with Soul Ring here, which isn't the best play considering I don't have a hard counter just to remand. Um... Another slight misplay. I think I make more misplays this game than all the rest of the games of the series here. Um, all invo involving the Sao Dun here. That and my timer actually gets quite low, and that ends up um, becoming quite a damper. So we're going to keep our remand up and our impulse up and see what he does. He uh, plays something that says discard on it. I don't like discard. Has uh, synergy with his dethrone. Put some aggro on me. Uh, I'm going to tempo him here with this remand. I also want to draw another card because we haven't quite hit our mana for future sight. We hit a twister, which gives us a second plan. And he goes ahead and swings and was out done again. No problem. We have a candelabra here. And we're going to go ahead and impulse on turn. We don't want to get hit by counter spells yet again. We see a counter spell, a windfall, and a couple lands. I'm really debating here whether I want to take the land and guarantee that I get to that future sight or keep up counter spell. Um, I really don't want to get wrecked by some kind of spell in his hand. I'm kind of afraid, so I'm going to go ahead and take the counter spell here. And I'm going to pass with my fetch open. Not playing white, so I don't really see mine since we're coming. Better chance of strip mine, so I'm going to keep that open. He mind twists here. What a kick in the balls. Now, at this point, I'm like, okay, counter spell. Now, the problem is he's got this Zao on board, right? So you can just get that mind twist right back. Hoping to top deck a land to get down my future sight um, without him being able to mind twist me. Now, here's my biggest misplay of the game. Um, I could probably have bounced the Zao Dun. And then he can't mind twist me on his turn, and I get another top deck here. Um, instead, I decide to hold the Cyclonic Rift because I think that he's going to get his mind twist off anyway, and if he misses on his land, it's only going to be a twist for three, and I have a chance of hitting my future sight or my twister. Um, but even if I'm doing that, why do I play the candelabra? It's kind of really, really greedy, because now I have a worse chance of having the twister or the future sight afterwards. So this is not really how I should have played this. I either should have played nothing, or I should have bounced his out on and played the candelabra, or bounces out on and not played the candelabra, but I definitely shouldn't have just played the candelabra. That's kind of silly, because he's always going to go with his mind twist here. Um, lucky for us, we do get to keep the future sight or the twister. We keep the future sight, which of the two, I'm not sure whether it's better or worse. His hand is full, so I'm going to say worse than the time twister, 
but we still get a little lucky here, and we still have access to Jaleva, so we don't have to waste a turn here. We to keep on churning. Um, we actually hit uh, Gataxan Probe here, as well as Merchant Scroll. During the game, I actually thought it was Gush, which I think is weird, um, and as well as something to kill with Soul Ring. So all good hits off our Jaleva here. Um, the best being Merchant Scroll, right, because we have High Tide Tech online, um, three islands as play, as well as his future site. He goes ahead and plays Marchessa, which Bruma says, hey, bro, no counters. Get another island off the top. Not only that, it's a fetch for a dual land, so we're going to go ahead and get that high tide right now and uh, smash his future site out while he's still tapped down. So we're going to high tide, and we're going to value crack our candle bra to untap to drag as much value as we can off this future site, really hoping to not see a land off the top of our deck here off this future site. One time it really pays to have a low land count. And in fact, we don't. We hit Demonic Tutor, which is wonderful, because we're going to go get our future top combo, and now next Tutor wins, and we have one mana draw card engine online, um, which is absolutely gross. So he really pretty much has to answer this future site, or he's totally boned, and we get to refill our hand here with more mana sources on the board. Though he does still have that Soul Ring advantage, though we can Vandal Blast it. Um... I'm going to make another misplay here, but it's mainly because I'm running really low on time. If you can see here, I'm down to about four minutes, and I'm more worried about the clock than I am my opponent. Um, he hasn't had counters lately. And if you see when I go through this uh, Limdul's Vault pile here, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the last piece of my future top combo. Though... He knows that's coming, and he Cyclonic Rift the Future Sight, so I can't get it off this turn. There's something to be said for Yogmoth's Will with this type of yard. But either way, you see we have Helm of Awakening, Mox Diamond, and Island here, and we're going to be able to play the Future Sight and see all those cards. So, we're going to go ahead and Helm here, give him the extra mana, and we're going to Herx Recall for one to get his Soul Ring back off the field. Though that literally was, yet again, a dumb play, because I played Helm of Awakening, so it literally does nothing. He just played it for free, right? So I have no clue why I did that. That was yet again another misplay. This was the worst game I played um, as far as making mistakes in this series. Um, I have no idea why I wasted that Herx recall there. It really made no sense. Though he tapped his Cavern of Souls anyway? Now I'm really confused. Maybe he didn't realize Helm of Awakening affects him? Mm, not sure. That should have just been a top activation, though, to see what I've got. Um... Anyway, the right play here is what? Go get our land with Jaleva, because we've got Helm, right? And then we have two mana open for our mana drain. Even if we just play the land, we have two mana open for mana drain. But if you look at my time, I only have three minutes. At this point, I'm thinking, how quick can I get the storm to kill him? I need 19 storm, and I'm just going. And he goes ahead and counterspells me here. Um, I should have swung first, but at this point, I'm just racing the clock and not him. Um, we started with a 25-minute series here, which is kind of silly with my deck because it takes me 15 minutes to play a game out because my kill turn will take so long if he makes me play it out, um, like we did here in Game 1. Um, at this point, I'm not really sure who's at an advantage, but I think he goes ahead and scoops it up, realizing that I'm just losing the timer here. Um, play Skeletal Scrying for a bunch. And goes ahead and scoops it up because I told him I would have had the win if I wasn't timered. And we decide that we're just going to host the games, not by challenging, which is the reason it had the 25-minute timer. For whatever reason, it's difficult to change. And I'm just going to join his 60-minute game so we can actually get some full games in here. We're not worried about the timer um, being an issue because I'm playing Storm. Yet again, I win the roll, and I get the first game. So, I go ahead and take this hand. It's got two islands. I can get my bad lands off that if I need red. I've already got a black off Demir Signet. Four mana sources. Protection. We really just need gas. And we always have Jaleva. Since this can go get red, Jaleva is online. So this hand is perfectly, perfectly keepable here. Lots of high tide. And then we pull an Ad Nauseam off the top. Gross. That Ad Nauseam will just wreck his day. We're just going to lead with the island here. Because we don't know if we can top deck a different land to not have to get that bad lance. But we're pretty sure we're going to have to because, right, it's a red fetch. And we only have one other black source. So unless we top a black source, there's no keeping extra high tide. He leads with Thoughtseize. So we're going to see kind of a uh, vintage or legacy type opening, though I'm not sure which player uh, you think was playing combo in this situation with him playing the uh, discard spell and me forcing it. But there's no way in hell I'm going to let him take that ad nauseum out of my hand. He falls up with a Mana Crypt, incredibly strong. Falls out with Lightning Greaves. Um... It's not bad to curve out off a Mana Crypt, but Lightning Greaves to me just says one less card that could be a counter spell, and I'm playing combo, and the extra haste is really not that relevant to me, so I don't really care. 
Um, at this point, I can either just go ahead and drop my signet or keep for the counter. Um, after getting hit with that uh, mind twist in the other game, I decide, with this mana crypt out, I think I'm just going to keep the counter. Plus, I'm sure he plays things like him, other discard spells. I really want to protect this ad nauseum. I don't know what he has yet. He plays an O-Stone. O-Stone doesn't scare me at all because, one, he's got a mana crypt out. And two, it costs five to pop. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at his hand. Dread Boar, Zealous Contrips, Vola Stronghold. So nothing we're really scared about. This gives us the go-ahead to go ahead and drop the Demir Signet, as well as we have a Swan Song here. We're really only worried about counter spells off the top of his deck. He's going to go ahead and play Marchessa here. No, he plays a Shadow Mage Jumping Trader off the top. So we know both the cards that are in his hand. But he gets to draw one off Shadow Mage. So, yet again, unknown. So, that's kind of a does-nothing play to me. It's almost like playing a probe, right? Except he doesn't get to see my hand. Um, that is an engine, but I'm not really, really worried about it. I get a Hercule, so if the stone becomes a problem, I can get rid of it. But at this point, uh, he has to have a counter off of, what, three cards, or he just loses. Um, had I had an extra mana source in my hand, I'd be willing to wait on this ad nauseum. But with him drawing two a turn... Um, it's better to just go for it here and hope he did not hit the counter spell. In fact, he doesn't have two blues, so even if he hit one, it would have to be a one blue counter spell. So we're going to go ahead and go for the win here. He, in fact, does not, and we hit tons and tons of mana. We get on tap with five extra, and we eventually hit a tutor here at the end. He is done. Uh, I'm trying to think about how I want to pile this intuition. Not sure how I want to win, and then I top deck Yogmoss Will with Yogmoss Intuition combo, and this game is just over. The rest is just going through the motions. Um, I'm not sure when he scoops it up, but probably pretty soon. I think when I tell him, "Hey, I've got Yogmoss Will," and pile Mind's Desire and High Tide Tech with my Intuition, and he goes ahead and scoops it in. Alrighty then. So the final game we played. Um, he gets to play first because I won. I take an incredibly greedy keep knowing even if I lose, I get a game three. There are no lands in this hand. However, I do have three mana in this hand, and I can use my preordained turn one to look for a land. I get a top deck, plus a scry two, so technically you're going to see like four cards here looking for that land, and I can wheel out with this mana crypt plus mana rock advantage, and being the greedy son of a bitch I am, I go ahead and take this hand. Plus, his deck is kind of soft to combo. I haven't seen that many counter spells. His density is not very high, so I'm kind of confident that this is not a bad hand. And uh, having to mull straight to six and one on one, um, this hand's really not bad. But there you go, Yu Gi Oh! Luck right at the top. I get my fetch land. So, not only am I not going to miss my land drop here on turn one, I get to use my preordained to search. I see Dark Ritual. I'm going to go ahead and take it because I've already made my land drop right. I get to play this Talisman. By the way, I use the Preordain uh, first off this land because there's a chance I get something better. Um, and we're going to go ahead and pass it out at 4 mana turn 1. Seems good. He represents Counterspell. So maybe he did finally hit it. So what we're going to do here is, after we top deck this Demonic Tutor, is say, okay, I'm going to float Dark Ritual for value. But... I got Demonic Tutor as a backup plan if you counter this wheel. He, in fact, tells me he has a mana leak, which is no good because I kept that Dark Ritual. And I'm still going to make my land drop off this wheel, so Dark Ritual is better than hitting a land there. And uh, he's going to go ahead and play another 1U card and bounce my mana crypt, getting rid of some of that value off my opener. Though we still get to keep the rock here. We don't really want to bin a Yawgmoth's Will or a Demonic Tutor or a Mana Crypt, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. We get to keep churning here. We make our land drop. And we hit another tutor anyway, so we get an intuition for value here. What am I going to grab? Can you guess? Card draw. So we're going to go for a recurring insight, time spiral, and time, twi uh, time twister here. We want to shuffle that library back in, or we want to get massive advantage. He still has a full hand. Um, that's the reason we took the spiral and the twister. We didn't really want to wheel and leave Yogmas Will in the yard. But doesn't seem to matter because he bajoke a ball, Yogmas Will. All these wonderful tutors, my mana crypt, and all this awesome stuff for my hand. Completely gone. Um, but Joker Bug, quite strong here. And if you notice, I don't have the mana to cast Seething Song and then have two blue up for my spiral. So I'm really looking to hit a, an additional mana source to be able to use this spiral. But I do not yet have it. Um, Jaleva? But I do have Jaleva to put pressure on him here. We hit Factor Fiction, great. Vampiric Tutor, great, and Thoughtseize, pretty decent. So all great hits off my Jaleva here, and uh, all coming from my deck, I think. Though, no, I think that is his Vampiric Tutor. 
Um, yep, I'm almost positive that's his vampiric tutor, but either that or his thoughts. He's, I think we both play both, so I'm not sure which is which, but we get good hits here. He goes ahead and plays Corrosive's Charm. Now, I think this is a massive misplay. Um, the main reason is, this pretty much says to me, I do not have a counter spell. That's the biggest reason it's a misplay. Getting rid of Lion's Eye Diamond is good. He doesn't obviously want me to float mana when I spiral out here. But the fact that he doesn't want me to do this pretty much uh, telegraphs to me in a one-on-one -on -one that I don't have the counter, which I think is kind of a misplay by him. So he goes ahead and kills the LED, and I'm actually happy about it because now I know, hey... You don't have a counter, you wouldn't have tapped all that blue mana, right? So I think he should have just tried to fake me out and pass with open blue here. Though I really wouldn't have done too much because I didn't have mana yet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cast this Factor Fiction because I would like to time spot her out. I don't like my hand. Um, I can keep the Vamp Tutor for later. So at this point, I'm taking whatever pile has the land, and I don't care about any of the other cards. So he splits it. Irrelevant. I just want the land. So Factor Fiction here is just a land, but more than good enough because we're going to get an untap forward with Spiral, and we're going to have a little floating because we're going to go ahead and use the Seething Song so we get a colorless floating. We untap into a wonderful hand with our High Tide Tech, a Tutor, a Ritual, Candelabra for High Tide Tech, um, as well as a Top, and a Thoughtseize to look at his brand new hand. So we're going to go ahead and put that Candle out with our Red, which is otherwise useless. We're going to go ahead and put our Top out because we can use our Voltaic here to get another Black um, even though we shouldn't have had to do that if we played the Candelabra off the right card. No, I think this was already tapped is what the problem was. <coughs> I'm not sure why I used the Underground C to play the top. I think that was a slight misplay, not that it matters. Um, he's got two kill spells for Jaleva here, as well as a Vampiric Tutor. Um, I'm really not worried about um, the kill spells, and since he's got two of them, there's really no point in taking um, anything that was a Vamp Tutor. Either way, I would still take the Vamp Tutor, so this is an easy Vamp Tutor grab with this Thought Seize. And I'm going to go ahead and Merchant Scroll here, and I have no clue why I take this turnabout. I'm not quite sure. I can't remember. That was definitely not the right card to grab with Merchant Scroll here. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm just tunnel visioning on High Tide, and I I think maybe I thought I could upkeep this Vampiric Tutor, even though it was under Jaleva or something stupid. Oh, now I remember. The Vampiric Tutor can go into top, but the reason it was dumb is because I know he's got two kill spells in his hand, so why do I think I can Vampiric Tutor into top and win off this high tide tech is beyond me. This should have been a gas card because I should expect him to kill Jaleva, right? So he is going to, in fact, kill Jaleva. I play Sig, and then he three manas into Jaleva kill here. The fuck did this game bug? Yeah, he definitely kills Jaleva with Fire Covenant. Unless I'm... I drank too much alcohol and really can't remember what's going on. And Grape Shot was not on top of my deck. Ad Nauseam was. He killed my general and I floated top and found Ad Nauseam and then killed him with High Tide Cabal Ritual and Turnabout, having way too much mana and then killing him with Ad Nauseam. So I have a feeling this game's just going to bug. And... Huh, my top is working. And now it's going to bug. Well, what really happened is he killed Jaleva. I saw Ad Nauseam on top with my top. And then with High Tide Turnabout and Cabal Ritual, um, obviously, uh, and Candelabra here, obviously that's way more than enough mana to uh, on-turn Ad Nauseam even with 30 life. As long as you hit a reach card, the game is over, which I, in fact, did. So really what happened is he kills Jaleva, and then I kill him with Ad Nauseam, but this game bugged for whatever reason. Well, that's the end of this series.